belittling people and telling them to wake the f up and all that sort of shit and pointing to food and this bullshit of going into supermarkets and demonizing anything that, that looks colorful and looks like a dessert. I, you're a fucking idiot for doing that. Do something original for fuck's sake, please. When you do that to people, they'll follow you, but they're not going to do what you're telling them because if you're a bodybuilder, yeah, we can all eat egg whites and oatmeal for the next five years. Try doing that to the average person. They're not going to last more than three days. When they're cornered and they're restricted like that, what can you really do for these people? Just also be real with yourself because most people lie to themselves before they lie to other people. Exactly. I myself do not have the discipline to diet for longer than three weeks. Even when I've won contests and I've gotten in my best shape, I can't stay on a diet for that long. I'll usually need to break it for some reason or another. There's some sort of connection with happiness like... Like I'm eating chicken breast and I, I know there's another chicken breast meal waiting and you're still burping the last chicken breast and, you know, you've waited two or three hours. I remember once at Bondi Beach and I was like dreading the thought of having to have another meal and I just said, just, just break this habit, go and have an ice cream. I don't know what happened, but after that ice cream, I don't know if it was because I was feeling so happy. Everything seemed to digest. It kind of like cooled my stomach down. And it actually prepared my stomach for the next meal. But I just decided to have dessert that time. And you know what? I still got in good shape. I didn't die from it. I didn't get diabetes from it. Because if you do want to indulge in food like Warren Buffett does, what is he now, 93? I don't think he's ever had a salad in his life. Bill Gates' kids loved Warren Buffett because he had Oreos for breakfast, right? He eats McDonald's. If he goes to dinner with you, like he even thinks Chinese food is too healthy. I'm not sure that he's ever eaten a vegetable. He's eaten like a six-year-old for the whole of his life. I'm not, I'm not saying to eat like Warren Buffett, and I'm, I, I don't think he's a diabetic, but when he has those meetings where, you know, they're strategizing on what to invest in and everything, he goes through a lot of chocolate and Coca-Cola. I don't think it's Diet Coke. Now, I'm not recommending you do that, but let's face it, the guy's in his 90s. I like eating good food, lean proteins, carbohydrates, the right carbohydrates, the low glycemic index. I do all that. However, don't fucking come and tell me that if you eat something that's in a colorful packet, you're going to die because you're not. And the people that do that, you know, you've got to eat like this and, you know, this is the best protein, an egg. Well, you know what? Like It is. And that's why I put one in my shake. But I don't have time to have a steak or chicken with vegetables for lunch. I don't. I'll tell you what what will kill you before any of that is sarcopenia. When I came out of hospital, I, I looked at myself and I said, this is the worst case of sarcopenia I've ever seen. Now, eating the way I'm doing now, which this morning included some Anzac biscuits, which are really delicious. They're Australian biscuits. You won't find them anywhere else. Apparently, they're gluten and wheat free, but whatever they were, I wanted that treat and I use that as my carbohydrates and it's not going to spike my insulin. You know why? Because I had so much fat and protein. I had about 50 grams of protein and if you count the fats that I had, I'm sitting on a like a 100 grams of fat. Now, let's face it, bros, don't be fucking stupid. If I finished my breakfast with three biscuits, what do you think is going to happen? Are those three biscuits, which have a lot of roughage in it, are they going to control all their fat? They're not. The fat is going to slow everything down to a slow digestion. So again, all these people that throw you into a hole by saying, you can't eat this, you can't eat this, this is shit, that's shit, that's no good. Yeah, true. But they don't give you a way out. If somebody's telling you, yeah, the best food is eggs uh, or lamb or chicken, yeah, okay, for three days. How are you going to eat after that? They've got no maintenance plan. This whole Colorado experiment where Casey V8 all trained a total of four and a half hours and he gained all that weight, what they're not telling you is that Arthur Jones forced him to stay in a hotel room and forced fed him, right? So now I've been out of hospital for two days. I'm not doing no Colorado experiment. And in those two days, I've gained 12 pounds of muscle. That's from food. And I still am struggling to get to 250 grams of protein. 250 grams of protein. That's the magic number for me to start growing. That's an anabolic number. You give me 250 grams of pure protein per day, and I'm not going to suffer from sarcopenia. This is all without putting any training in. Some secret herbs and spices, which I won't get into right now. Everyone focuses on the secret herbs and spices, thinking that's 
Yeah, well, that's it's, the bee's knees of what's no, doing that's it. No, that's a small <laughs> that's a small part of the jigsaw puzzle. The food plays a major role in bodybuilding. Yeah, you can follow a keto diet, but then you you know there's some people out there that spell it out pretty good. Samia Banut, one of the best Mr. Olympia we've ever had, even though he's only won it once. It's just the way he looked, and he practically tells you. If you stop having carbohydrates, nothing happens. The body just stops. Now, I don't agree with that 100% because sometimes you need to manipulate those carbs. In reality, he's right. If you want to make gains and you're lifting weights, you need carbohydrate. It is true that nutrition is 80%. But you're starting to see that with me. I haven't even trained. I haven't measured my body fat, but it looks like it's dropped in the last couple of days because I've picked up my metabolic rate. It's a combination of high protein and carbohydrates. So you, you saw the difference, how I filled out. It looks like it took some sort of drug. I'm taking nothing. It's just food. I know how to eat. However, for life extension purposes, you know, to help with diabetes, simply being fit, then it's the other way around. Exercise is number one. You can get a person who smokes and eats all the wrong foods, but he'll exercise two to three hours a day. Walking, light exercise, dancing, it all fits into to exercise. For every hour that you spend doing that, you are extending your life by three hours. The person who eats well, watches their diet, is meticulous, doesn't touch anything other than the so-called perfect foods and does not exercise, will not live as long as the person that exercises. Now, remember, I'm not talking about bodybuilding because some of the things that bodybuilders do these days are certainly not life extension tools. They do some dangerous fucking shit. Not everybody wants to look like that, but I came into the sport knowing and feeling that you had to have your health if you wanted to be a good bodybuilder. So I was influenced by people like Paul C. Bragg, Jack LaLanne. Now, if you do it correctly, you look at your diet, you're eating well, then exercise becomes everything. With diabetes, there is a way around it. And, you know, dropping body weight, exercising, and following a diet that you can actually follow. I was on a strict to me, what is a strict diet where I ate no processed foods for three months? It's yeah. the hardest thing I've ever bloody done in my life. Yeah. Now, if you were to say I had to live the rest of my life that way, you'd rather not. I'd rather get shot in the head. Yeah. And this is what these people don't get. Where I come in is, I, I will show you those shortcuts. You're not going to die if you have dessert. It's not going to happen. You just need to put certain things in place. You need to know your parameters. When you allow people and you tell them it's okay to do this, they don't feel restricted. They don't feel like they're in jail. I, I know the feeling. I, I did a contest once where I got food poisoning. The doctor sat me on the bed, pulled my pants down, looked at my ankles and knees, and he said, this is straight after the contest. I want you on a bland food diet. I freaked out. I, I pulled my pants up, and all I heard was the word diet, diet, that week. Because of what the doctor said to me, I gained 25 pounds because I thought, no, nah, fuck, I've been dieting for months. Now, this guy wants me back on a diet. Now, all he meant was don't put any salt in your food. You're holding water. But when I heard that word diet, I freaked out. And this is what happens to most people. Not that it counts for much. I did a course at Sydney Uni, Sydney University. The psychological aspects of dieting and that was done by a psychologist who was just interested in weight loss and fitness and it was a really extensive course and if you see the excuses that people make and how they feel when you restrict them these people that get on social media and they tell you seven foods you should never eat and all the chemicals that are in them for starters we are living longer and eating those foods and living longer okay yeah you may want to improve the quality of your life but you're not going to do it by restricting people what it's going to take is exercise you need to exercise any form of exercise weight training is obviously the best form of exercise it could even be functional training but let's just say regular weight training you don't have to work to failure it just needs to be a good solid workout and the right foods and indulge in dessert like let, let's be real okay just let's get real okay that's the motto just let, let's get real about this steve jobs on his deathbed seven billion dollars said well laying in my deathbed i did realize that whether it's a rolex that cost a half a million or whether it's a $20 watch, 
it still says the same time. Whether it's a Rolls Royce or a Toyota, it will still get you there on time. People chase, chase the wrong thing. Man. Yeah. So this is my blend, whey isolate. It's got two types of whey isolate and a whey concentrate in it. It's also got really good pharmaceutical grade digestive enzymes. So when you drink this, I have found nothing. There's other protein powders that have these products, but they don't have the enzymes. It's not grass fed. And when I drink this, it's like your stomach is just so comfortable. It doesn't feel like you've had anything, but that's what I love about it because it's not expanding your stomach, but it's giving you 50 grams of protein that are going to grow these muscles. 250 grams of filtered water, 250 grams of almond milk. Everybody on social media that is coming up with all the things that are wrong with it, I, I know all of that. One jumbo free-range egg, approximately one tablespoon virgin olive oil, just a touch of Celtic salt. Cocaine for the taste? Well, um, you'll have to wait a minute. I can't do that in front of the camera. <laughs> and now each one of these scoops, that's 30 grams of protein. And then I do a half scoop. So that's 45 grams of protein. The egg contains around 8 grams of protein. That's my next meal.